basically the cyclophotocoagulation works as just like we used to do cyclocryon. It reduces the aqueous production by causing scarring of the ciliary body processes. It's a treatment generally which we are doing reserved for painful blind eyes with high intraocular pressure. We select painful blind eyes who are poor candidates for doing the bleb forming surgical procedures and you are not preferring, we are not preferring right now to do this on seeing eyes for the purpose is number one is that it is not a predictable procedure. Sometimes it produces no effect at all and sometimes it produces too much of an effect and there is a known incidence of patient developing thysis bulbi after this procedure as well. So you wouldn't want to risk a seeing eye, especially a only seeing eye with this kind of a procedure. However, in non-seeing eyes, it is a good thing to do because it's got some advantages. It is non-invasive. You can repeat it. Relatively, it is easy to perform. The procedure involves you have to give local anesthesia. You cannot do this without anesthesia because even with anesthesia, most of the patients do experience some amount of pain. We would generally prefer to give a peribulbar block. You can even give a retrobulbar block. And on addition to that, we do put topical anesthetic as well. Use an eye speculum and what we use is a G-probe which is available with the diode laser machine. The G-probe essentially consists of, this is the tip of the G-probe which is going to be applied to the surface of the eye. It is gently curved at this end and this is the part from which the laser is going to be applied. This end is going to be abutting along the limbus and this is the other end is going to be projecting backwards. I will show you on the second slide how it is applied. Uh, the probe applications have to be done in a circular fashion all around the limbus. Ocular surface has to be kept moist and this is an extremely important step because if you do not or shortcut this step, you are going to land up with complications. The probe has to be applied parallel to the visual axis. Placement is along the curvature of the eye. As I showed you, the probe is a slightly curved. The total number of applications usually between 18 to 21 depending on the size of the eye. In 270 degrees, the temporal part is usually the sector is spared, so you don't do 360 degrees. So this is the kind of distribution you will have and this is the foot plate of the probe. When you put the probe, it's going to be applied like this. The end which I showed you, narrower end will abut along the limbus and the wide flanged end will go posteriorly and the tip will apart over here and produce the burn over here. So you start applying in this fashion, go all around and spare the temporal sector. This is how it is applied and the laser goes and burns. It is a, essentially a blind procedure. You don't actually see the ciliary body being coagulated. The power settings that you, we normally set because our patients generally have the dark brown iris. So we power set at around 1250 microwatts at 400 milli, 4000 milliseconds. And you give one shot and you see you will hear a pop sound. If you do not hear the pop sound, you increase the power by 50, 50 microns till you hear the pop sound. Once you hear the pop sound, you reduce the power by 50 or 100 microns. You don't want to hear the pop sound, but you want to give the dose so that it does produce a reaction. So you have to titrate it a bit and in lesser pigmented iris, you will require more power. So the application of the laser is, applied, is accompanied with a pop sound and surgeons prefer generally to use a power which is a little less than that which produces the pop sound. During the procedure, as I pointed out, keeping the ocular surface moist and going on putting balance all solution or over the cornea all the time is extremely important. The tip has to be wiped and kept clean. Any blood or any deposit on the tip is going to artificially deliver more laser and could produce a burn or even a perforation. So burns are seen especially if the probes are not kept clean and if the ocular surface is not moistened well enough, you will see burns occurring. After the surgery is done, after the procedure is complete, you have to give oral acetazolamide and topical anti-glaucoma medications along with oral anti-inflammatory analgesics and topical cycloplegics and steroid antibiotic combination. So you have to almost give all the medications that you would give in a trabeculectomy or a valve surgery plus give Dimox because you are going to get an immediate post-operative IOP surge. Usually patients do complain of pain after this procedure which is variable. Sometimes it can be for two to three days. You have to cover them very well. So it is not a procedure which is totally easy to bear. But in most of the patients it does produce the beneficial reaction of bringing down the intraocular pressure and controlling the plainful blind eye. 
So, as I said, there is a spike and known to be associated with some inflammation as well. And IOP starts to reduce by about 7 to 10 days post-operative, not immediately. Complications commonly seen, a little bit of inflammation is definitely, does occur, cyclitis, vitritis, iridocyclitis, a spike in IOP is definitely there. In some cases, especially in the neovascular cases, you might get hyphema. And as I said, it is unpredictable. In some cases, you do not get an adequate response at all. Less common complications are the conjunctival burn, which definitely occurs if you don't take proper care while doing the procedures. Scleral burns and perforations also occur. These probes are by the company, they are labeled as disposable and not for reuse. But in India, as we are, we do ETO them and reuse them, but you have to be careful. Moment this probe shows some signs of getting withered out, it should be replaced. And in some cases, even with all the care, there have incidences and reports of persistent hypotony and patient developing thysis or atrophic bulbi. That is the reason why this procedure being a little blind procedure, an unpredictable procedure, I do not advocate it to be used in seeing eyes. And the next procedure which Dr. Gauri Murthy is going to talk about is the endocyclophotocoagulation where you see it under vision because you are actually coagulating accurately where you need to probably that can be a procedure which can be done in seeing eyes. Thank you very much.